Hi guys, I'm uh, smiling ear to ear because I have an idea and I think this idea is gonna be great. So I want you guys to know that I've been watching these videos and I'm just like you. You start watching a video on UFOs and before you know it, you've watched eight videos in a row, right? Three hours worth, right? You start watching videos on old movies that are classics and before you know it, you've taken a deep dive. You start watching books on this, that and the other and before you know it, you've been watching eight hours of endless videos on stupid stuff that you would normally never pay attention to. What I was watching was a video by a YouTuber named Justin Jordan. I'll put his picture somewhere up on the screen so you can see what he looks like. He did a video that I thought was super interesting. It was a reaction video called Gen Alpha is attacking their teachers. One of the things that was interesting besides the video itself and besides uh, Justin's reaction and commentary was the comments. Now, one thing that my channel used to have back in the Back in the day, I used to have a lot of comments that were just so encouraging and so neat to read. Now, we hardly have any comments at all, and even when people leave comments, YouTube erases them all. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you some comments that I just thought were fascinating, and I'm going to give you some commentary on those comments. So again, the subject today was Gen Alpha is attacking their teachers. So I'm assuming Gen Alpha is the younger kids. I don't know exactly the year and age break off, but I'll probably put it up here on the screen for you just in case you're not familiar with it either. Here's the first comment that I read, and this was by a viewer called at Avaya West 6008. Avaya's comment, Avaya, by the way, yours was the first comment that I thought, wow, that's a good comment. It says, I work at a daycare as a teacher for three-year-olds, and they are violent. They're biting, kicking, punching, etc. They are so mean, exclamation point. Now, I wanna ask you guys a question. Thank you. <laughs> I wanna ask you guys a question. You probably met three-year-olds in your life that screamed, that cried, that whined. They might have thrown a little mini tantrum, but I don't think you would ever describe them as violent. With an asterisk, of course, there's always an asshole kid, right? <laughs> but the point of the story that I'm trying to portray is, I think kids are getting worse. They're learning it from their parents. Their parents are constantly in arguments. Everybody is telling the women to break up with the men. There's no stability in the family. They probably hear just as many F words and other words flying around the house as anything else. They internalize that. They take it to school and before you know it, they're beating up the teachers and they're beating up their fellow three-year-olds. To the three-year-olds out there that can hear my voice, be a good kid, watch some cartoons for Pete's sake, holy moly. And I agree, they are mean as hell, no doubt about it. By the way, if you have any comments that you'd like to leave down below, please do. And no, I don't think most three-year-olds are a-holes, probably a bad choice of language. Forgive me. Number two, this was a comment left by PoliteFrog underscore 8892. I always wonder where they come up with these names. But anyway, Polite Frog said, it is hard to discipline your children, but it's 10,000 times harder to not discipline them as they grow up into criminals. That is probably the most important comment that you can actually give Polite Frog because the truth is, sometimes you have to be honest with people. And I think we can all agree that right now we are on a collision course to have a situation where these kids that can't get along with each other, that can't make, make things work in the classroom, are soon gonna be young adults that are feeding us when they work at fast food restaurants, and you're gonna start having a lot of people that croak because of food poisonings. And I mean that literally. When you raise kids that aren't ready to be in society, they tend to lash out in ways that are way beyond what we would expect. So in the future, especially if you have a disagreement with the person behind the counter at the fast food restaurant, you better be smart enough to check your food. It used to be in my day, if you said something bad, 
you wanted to look for boogers or loogies, these young people nowadays will probably put some bleach in your burger for all you know. I would really, really think twice before you start an argument with these young kids nowadays. There's no such thing as verbally discussing something. There's no such thing as having a disagreement. It's simply getting ready to fight. So again, be smart when you're dealing with these young kids. They're unhinged. And yes, it's because young parents age 30 and below are crazy. And no, I don't care if you, if you get upset that I call you crazy. The truth is the world sucks because you young people, you kind of suck. Number three, this comment was by Soul's Girl. By the way, if you think I'm stealing something from somebody, you're wrong. You know why? Because most people don't even bother responding to their comment section. So by golly, I'm going to do it. Number three, no child left behind has been the worst thing ever for these kids. Some need to be left behind to realize there's actually consequences to failing. Can I get an amen, souls girl? I agree with you completely. One of the best ways that a person can get his acting gear is to say, holy moly, you mean the other kids are gonna go ahead a grade and I'm gonna be stuck back here in third or fourth grade again? When you let kids know that, hey, we're not just gonna give you a free pass in life, it's better for them to find that out sooner rather than later. And you can take a third or fourth grader and you can help them get up to par with their class by holding them back. We live in a world where I think I told you guys this before. I remember in fourth and fifth grade, we would be reading a book together as a class. And you'd always have certain people that could read the paragraph with no problems, but then you always had Joey that could barely read two or three words in a row without having to stop and you know enunciate every single sound in the, uh, in the uh, sentence. By the way, one of the things that this video that, that Justin put up said, one of the people he was doing a reaction to, actually said the words that people nowadays don't realize that their kids aren't learning phonics. They're, they don't know how to enunciate or pronounce sounds. You know how we would learn that PH together sounds like a fa or TH together sounds like a the? They don't know how to sound out words. She said that the words they actually know how to spell are the ones that they've been texting and have memorized. And it finally hit me. What does she mean by memorization? Well, it's just like you and me learned how to multiply one through 10 and nine times eight and seven times six, right? We learned how to multiply through memorization. You can't do that with the English language. You have to learn how to pronounce different sounds. That way, when somebody says a word that's foreign to you, you can still take your knowledge and try to guess how to spell the word. What the teacher was saying is that these kids memorize words. So if you give them a weird, odd, odd word, they have no idea how to spell it. For example, turn on the faucet. They have no idea that there's an F-A-U in there in the beginning of faucet. So they'll spell it like F-O-S-S-E-T-T. -T. Here's the crazy thing. If you go and watch one of Justin's videos, or this video in particular, what you take away from it, because it's a bunch of teachers that are venting, what you take away from this compilation is that teachers feel like the kids nowadays are really not that smart. You know, where the average person can say, man, these, these kids are dumb, these kids are stupid. Obviously, these are teachers. They can't say those words. But what else does it mean when they tell you these kids aren't at a seventh grade level, they're at a second or a third grade level? That's a really nice way of saying these kids are dumb. So what we need to do is we need to not just bury our head in the sands. We need to start coming up with ideas. Oh, hey, I have an idea, Jesse. Yes, Bob, what's your great idea? Let's get rid of the cell phones immediately. Let's not wait till tomorrow. As a, as a parent, how about we take that cell phone away? And if they argue with you, how about you call the phone company and disconnect the service? You know, you're not stuck in this world where you can't do anything. Do you want your kid to be happy? Or do you want your kid to graduate and learn skills and knowledge? Because that's gonna make them happy in the long run because you already know what happens. When they go out in the real world and get their ass kicked, 
they have no problem blaming you as their parent because you didn't prepare them. So prepare them the best way we know how. Get the cell phone out of their hands now before it's mandated by the schools. You shouldn't have to have a school tell you how to raise your kids. Get the cell phone out of their hands and then be happy because they're gonna start getting straight A's while everybody else in the class is struggling. And if your kid goes to one of these crazy schools where the kids act crazy, think about sending them to live with your parents or something so they can get a real education in a decent part of town. If, you go, if your kids just rot away in a place that they're not gonna learn, you're not helping them at all in their future. And when they try to go to secondary education at a prep school, or if they actually go to college, you're, they're gonna be failures and they're gonna, they're gonna flunk out. This one might be my favorite one. This one was from a viewer called Rompelstomp. Rompelstomp writes, entitlement is definitely not limited to the, to the kids. Entitlement is definitely not limited to the kids. Got that right. I've seen grown adults throw hissy fits in the middle of a giant store because somebody didn't cradle their ego. You know that saying, the customer is always right? I think we need to do away with that because I watch videos nonstop and it looks like the customer is wrong about 90% of the time. So let's get rid of that, right? Because we get rid of every other thing that's older that makes sense, right? Let's get rid of that too. How about this? How about if there's a video of you causing a disturbance? You know, like when they go to fast, fast, fast food restaurants and they don't get their way, so they end up causing a disturbance and ruining property and stuff. How about you just automatically get 30 days in jail? Right? How about just automatically, if they have you on camera causing a commotion, 30 days in jail. We'll call it the law for a better, more kind, polite society. It ought to be a federal law. Will it happen? No, of course not. Of course not. It's something that judges would be willing to do, but you know, they're always going to say their hands are tied behind their back and all the policies that we have are to basically make people feel good about themselves, even though all it does is make everybody miserable. But yeah, I agree with you completely. I can't tell you how many times I see people of all backgrounds cause a hissy fit inside of a store. It is so embarrassing and usually their rudeness is because they think somebody disrespected them. Meanwhile, they're disrespecting every single person that went into the store behind them who wants to get their fast food meal or who wants to get you know a visit with customer service to return their item, right? It's always the same type of individual, somebody that it's almost like they just need nonstop attention. If you go to fast food restaurants to get attention, something is wrong with you and something is obviously wrong with your kids too. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about this subject. Can I get an amen? God, Bob, I really like this. This is what my channel was supposed to be, where people would give thoughtful comments and we could talk about them. But when YouTube doesn't ever share my videos, by golly, we're gonna find a way without YouTube. If you're a partner with YouTube and you think they suck as well, let me know down in the comments because my thinking is we're just gonna go around them. The other day I was at Chick-fil-A and I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Chick-fil-A, at least the one I go to, it has like two drive throughs right? Two different lanes. And ideally one lane goes and then the next lane goes, right? And it's a fine oiled machine if everybody knows what they're gonna order. But of course, with my luck, I end up finding myself behind the guy that either has one of two things. He either has a million people to order for or he likes to look at everything for 10 minutes before he orders. You ever see those people? I'm sure you've been behind them in line before. We all have, right? Well, I tend to attract those people nonstop. That's why I think I might be slightly cursed. But anyway, make a long story short, I go to Chick-fil-A. The uh, I have two options on the aisle. I decide to go with, with the left option, the left side of the line. The right side ends up sending one, two, three, four vehicles, not one or two, four vehicles before the Yahoo in front of me has the decency to finally finish his order. That's one of those things that just bugs the shit out of me. Is it that big of a deal? Of course not. 
Am I being a little petty by mentioning it? I don't know if it happens all the time. Do you think people could maybe have an idea of what you're going to order before you get up to the register? I mean, it's Chick-fil-A. How many things are there? There's the deluxe chicken sandwich. There's the original chicken sandwich. And then there's the 8 or 12 pack of nuggets. And if you want to be healthy, maybe you can go for the salad. It's not like they have a million things to choose from. Does it really take you a half hour to make your selection? Jeez Louise! This final comment comes from a person that goes by the tag White Lily 7577 or I think they call it a handle. This person goes by a handle White Lily 7577. White Lily says my class is so bad. How bad are they? My class is so bad they made their science teacher quit and actually run out of the school. Now here's one thing White Lily that I have to mention. I went to school for quite a few years. I even managed a couple of semesters at the community college. Never, not one time in my life, did I see a teacher head for the door and say, I'm out of here. But I have watched a handful of videos just today where that exact thing has happened. And you wanna know what's the sad thing? Every time it happens, there's kids filming it because they wanna go viral, right? And every single time you got kids snickering and laughing in the background, and they don't realize that that potentially world-class science teacher is now going to be replaced with a substitute that might not even be credentialed to teach science. So you're literally laughing at yourself getting cheated out of a proper education. And then to reward that teacher that probably was at his or her wit's end, the, the district will actually put a little check mark next to their name so that if they want to get hired at any other school in the district, they'll get penalized for it. Now, does that sound like a fair shake for teachers? No. The teacher has trouble with students. Why? Because the principal never have their back. The staff are never there to support them. The teachers take their, uh, the, te the, uh, the parents, excuse me, they take their, their student side of the story. I mean, come on, parents, wake up. Do you think the teacher is really calling you and telling you that your child is having trouble focusing? because they're just trying to upset you, because they're just trying to be hard on your child? Or could it be that your sweet prince or your sweet princess is actually a pain in the you know what every time you're not around? This is why I'm telling you what we need is for judges to start getting these parents and fining them. And on top of the fine, you need to spend one week in the class with your child. And if this happens again after that one week, it'll be two weeks with the child and a double fine. And who knows, maybe you can even throw them in jail for the night. The parents have to be responsible going forward. And the first thing that has to happen is the parents need to disconnect those darn cell phones. If your child is 10 years old and they cannot spell the word open or the word exit, then you are doing a horrible job as a parent and you should be in jail because you're literally making a situation where your kids aren't going to go to jail. They're going to be homeless. They're going to be homeless. Not all kids are, are mean, cruel, but there's no place that's going to hire them if they can't spell, if they can't put a sentence together, if they can't communicate with people. And I'm sorry, it's not on the school anymore. It used to be. It's really on you. And principals out there and school superintendents, I just have to say it, predominantly speaking, you guys just aren't really doing a good job anymore. If the only way you get success is to pass everybody, and you've got kids in seventh or eighth grade that should be reading on the third or fourth grade level, or excuse me, are reading on the third or fourth grade level, you're doing a horrible job. Quit, quit applying for the annual raise. Quit doing that. That's what irritates me. You find out that these people, they start off at one salary, and then three or four years later, they've, they've increased their salary by 33%, but yet the school's horrible. Teachers are quitting in droves. And then what they do to paraprofessionals is just criminal. They give them 29 hours so they can go in there and not even get benefits. Could you imagine if a school didn't want to give you an extra hour so you're, you're literally working without any medical, dental, or vision insurance? There's no workman's comp for you because you're not full-time? I mean, I don't know about you. 
I, I find that horrible. And that's what a lot of these schools do. Hey, we don't need anybody full-time. We need somebody that can be part-time. Okay, what do you need, 15, 20 hours a week? No, no, we want them to go right up to the full-time level, you know, 29 and a half hours. So in other words, we want them to basically be stuck there all day, but not have any benefits. And then we wonder why this perpetual loop of suck ass is happening. I'm telling you guys, this is why I walk. Because our world, if you're reading this book, one of the things that people that read books like me love to do is we love when we're halfway through the book to kind of predict the ending. Am I right? Don't we like doing that? Well, if this was a book that you were reading, what do you think the end is going to be? Do you think it's going to be a bright, shiny ending with kids that are smarter than ever? Or do you think it's going to be one of those situations where we're really ruining our country one kid at a time? The only reason these kids are pathetic is because their parents are. And I'm sorry, but if you're a parent and your kids are actually doing well, then obviously I'm not talking to you. Tell me you're intelligent enough to know that. These kids are being failed by their parents. What we need to do is we need to get these kids disciplined because otherwise they're going to be the ones that are laying hands on people. And what's so funny is that nobody seems to care until it's you they lay hands on. That's where empathy and sympathy comes in. Put yourself in the place, not of your student, who's a monster, put yourself in the place of the teacher who's at his or her wit's end. And they're asking you to help them with your child. And your answer is, that's why I send them to the school. You figure it out. That is a horrible answer. And that's what you're doing to them, parents. That's what you're doing. And it was no big deal in the 80s or 90s when your kid was the only monster in the class. Now it's a classroom full of monsters and who's really getting cheated is the kids that are there to learn and they can't because your heathen child is out of control. So what do we do, Jesse? What's the answer? The answer is we need to start being proactive. We need to start letting the kids know, guess what? The phones aren't allowed in school anymore. And if you don't start passing your classes, you're gonna graduate with the kids that are not even in school yet. You're gonna be held back. This, we need to get rid of this no child left behind. If some of these kids aren't trying and, and their parents aren't being a support system, then they're actually being a drag on the whole system. And it's just, it's not working. Sometimes you have to look at it and you have to say, you know what, the way that we're doing it now, it's not only that it's not working, it sucks. Let's go back to the way it was. This is yet again another example how we can actually do better by going back to the way that it was. Whenever people tell you, you don't want to go back in the past, we need to progressively move in the future, you know what? Their ways don't work. If it ain't broke, don't, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It wasn't broken before. It's totally broken now. So again, if you guys disagree with me, let me know in the comments. I want you guys to disagree with me. That's what, that's what discourse and, and conversation and debate is about. It's about putting up your arguments. It's not about raising your fist and fighting people that disagree with you. And parents, if your kids are horrible at school, you really need to start looking at the woman or the man in the mirror it's really on you. Those kids are going to have a horrible life unless you start doing things the right way. And with that being said, I'm out. We'll see you tomorrow.